Okay, in this video, I'm going to uh, cover um, part part of section 2.1 and 2.2. 2, um, <clears throat> 2.1 and 2.2 2 are pretty related to each other. And the main thing that we're going to talk about is lines or linear functions. Uh, a definition, <clears throat> it says that intercepts are the points where a graph crosses or touches the coordinate axes. So it might, you know, we might have a curve that, that comes down and crosses through the x-axis, or it might down come and touch the x-axis and pull away type thing. That's still an intercept. Um, an x-intercept is an x-value where the graph crosses the x-axis, and a y-intercept is a y-value where the graph crosses the y-axis. Uh, so let's take a look at uh, this example here. What if we have the curve y equals negative 2x plus 5? Okay, that, that'd be a line. And uh, let's, uh, let's graph that by using the intercept method. Okay, so I gotta find the x-intercepts and the y-intercepts, and then I'll list the points at the end there. To find an x-intercept, I need to let y be zero and solve for x. To find a y-intercept, I need to let x be zero and solve for y. So whatever kind of intercept you're wanting to find, let the other guy be zero and then solve for that variable. Okay, so to get the x-intercepts, I, like, I need to let y be 0. And uh, I have the equation 0 equals negative 2x plus 5. If I add 2x and then divide by 2, x is equal to 5 halves. So then to get the y-intercepts, I'm letting x be 0. And when x is 0, it looks like y is 5. So the two intercepts are going to be the points. Uh, 5 halves, 0. y was 0. And when x is 0, y is 5, so 0, 5 would also be on the graph. Okay, uh, and then when we um, plot these points here, here's a 0, or here's a 2 and a half, 0, or 5 half, 0, and then here's a 0, 5 on the graph. Okay, and then I've got those two points, so then we'll draw a line there, and that would be the graph of uh, y equals negative 2x plus 5. Okay, now um, the, using the intercepts is, is, is an okay method for, for graphing lines. You know, as, as long as these two points are somewhat distant from each other, then you can draw the line, you know, using those two points. Um, using the slope and the y-intercept, that's another common method that we use to draw lines. Okay, um, so the slope, m, of a line containing the points x1, y1, and x2, y2 is m equals y sub 2 minus y sub 1 divided by x sub 2 minus x sub 1. Or sometimes we say change in y over change in x. Because when we use that, that terminology, that's exactly what we, what we mean here. I'm, I'm looking at how y is changing by computing the difference and then dividing that by how x is changing by computing the difference. So if we take a look at an example here, what if we have the points negative 1, 1 and 4, 3? Okay, and I want to find the slope of the line passing through those two points. So change in y over change in x. Looks like x1 is negative 1, y1 is 1, x2 is 4, and y2 is 3. So I'm just going to plug in the numbers where I see them into this formula. I'll have uh, 3 minus 1 is the difference in the y values. Divided by the difference in the x values, we got 4 minus a negative 1. Their same as 4 plus 1. Uh, so 2 fifths is the slope of that line. Okay. If I go ahead and graph these points, here's a negative 1, 1. And then here would be 4, 3 on the graph. And I draw the line there. Now I'm saying that the line has a slope of two-fifths. You may have also heard of the terminology rise over run. Okay, So uh, we use that terminology to describe how to get from one point to the next on this line. Okay, So starting at the point negative 1, 1, I'm going to have to rise up two units and run to the right, because that's a positive number, five units to get to that next point. And if I continue to rise up two, go to the right five, rise up two, go to the right five. You know, I, I can gather a whole bunch of points up on, on this line. <clears throat> or um, 
Uh, now, when, whenever uh, we have a positive slope, the line is going to be slanted this direction, okay? Whenever we have a negative slope, the line is going to be slanted the other way. And one way that I like to remember this is uh, a line with a negative slope on it means that you can construct a capital N for negative, whereas you can't do that with the positive case. Okay, so the slope, really, really important. Okay, not only does it tell us how to get from one point to the next on this line, but it also tells us how the line should be slanted ahead of time, okay? Um, let's uh, take a look at uh, this example, okay? Or, excuse me, a definition. Uh, it says that a linear function is a function of the form f of x equals mx plus b, or y equals mx plus b, y and f of x are the same thing, where m and b are real numbers. M is the slope, and B is the y-intercept. Okay, the domain of any linear function also is all real numbers. So let's take a look at uh, this example here. What if we have uh, the function f of x equals negative 2 thirds x plus 1? Okay, and we want to draw that line. So this line has a slope of... Uh, negative two-thirds and a y-intercept at one. Okay, um, now up here I was using the intercept method to graph this line and down here I'm going to use the the slope and the y-intercept to graph the line. Okay, which to me is the more common method, but uh, so the y-intercept is one and that means that zero one I can use that as a start point because that's where the line is going to cross through the y-axis and then work off the slope. The slope is negative two thirds. So I'm going up two and to the left, since that's a negative, three. And if I go up two into the left three, up two into the left three, you know, I can gather up a whole bunch of points on this line. Or going up two into the left three, that's the same thing as going down two into the right three. You know, and so I can gather up some points uh, flowing into quadrant four here. Once you got a couple of points, uh, go ahead and draw the line, okay? The line is slanted in the negative direction because that negative slope there, so I, I, I could know that right away, you know? Um, now, the y-intercept is one. We, we said that earlier, right? The x-intercept, if they wanted to know that, will be found when y is zero. y and f of x are the same thing. So I'd have the equation zero equals negative two-thirds x plus one, if I solve that for x, add 2 thirds x to both sides, and then multiply both sides by 3 over 2, x is equal to um, 3 halves. Okay, so where the line is going to cross to the x-axis is going to be at 3 halves 0. Okay, now if they were asking for the 0 of the function, this is terminology that we'll see later on when we get into chapter, uh, chapter 3, um, the zero, more specifically, is what is the x value when y is zero? Well, we already found that. It's three halves, right? So, because uh, three halves zero is on the graph. So the zero would be three halves, okay? Again, we're, we're, we're going to do lots of things later on uh, in chapter three here with zeros, okay? So there's, there's more on that later. Um, we uh, take a look at another example here. What if I have the line y equals 5x minus 3? Okay, so that line has a slope of 5 and a y-intercept at negative 3. So 0 and negative 3, we can use that as a start point and then uh, work off of the slope. The slope is five. Five is the same thing as five over one, right? And so I'm going up five and to the right one. That's a positive slope. So uh, if I go up five and the right one, up five and the right one, I gather up a whole bunch of points on this line. Once I have a few points here, I, I go ahead and draw the line, okay? And the y-intercept, as we already said, that's negative three. The x-intercept 
would be found if y is 0. If y is 0, I would have the equation 0 equals 5 uh, 5x minus 3. So then if I add 3 and then divide by 5, the x-intercept would be 3 fifths. Okay, so I'm not asking for that, but if, if I want to know where this line crosses the x-axis, that would happen at 3 fifths 0. So the 0 of this equation would be 3 fifths. A 0 is the same thing as, the, as an x-intercept. Okay, keep, keep that in mind for later on when we do lots and lots of things with zeros. Okay, a, a zero is the same thing as an x-intercept. Uh, here's an example, okay. Um, so in some of these problems, they, they have, uh, you know, story problems where you work with lines. <clears throat> so... Uh, the cost C to rent a small moving truck and drive it X miles is C of X equals 0 .0, 0 0.45 times X plus 18.95. Okay, and um, we want to know uh, what is the domain of C. And we're going to interpret the slope and the y-intercept and then find uh, C of 75. All right, so the domain of C, domain means we're talking about X. What are all the X values? Well, X represents the number of miles that you're going to drive this, this truck. Okay, I know I can't drive negative miles. So X can't be a negative. X has to be either zero or something bigger than that. Okay, now if I just had the line y equals 0.45 times x plus 18.95, the domain would be all real numbers. But this line is directly related to a story problem. So I'm going to have a restricted domain. Okay, again, x can't be a negative. That doesn't make sense. Uh, so then part b, we want to interpret the slope in the y-intercept. Okay, so the slope of this line is uh, 0.45. The y-intercept is 18.95. What does the slope mean to us in this problem? Well, um, it's going to cost 45 cents per mile that you drive the truck. Okay, so um, that's why I'd say there for, for the slope. Now, now, what they don't mean is they don't mean how I would graph the line. Okay, so they're not they're not saying... You're going to go up 0.45 into the right one, up 0.45 into the right one, up 0.45 into the right one, although you would be doing that, you know, if, I, if you were to draw this line here. But that, that's not what they're asking for. Okay, so um, how, how does the slope relate to this story problem? Okay, and the y-intercept, how does the y-intercept relate to the story problem? So the y-intercept is 18.95, okay? Um, what that means is that there would be an $18.95 rental fee just to get the first, or just to get the truck in the first place. And then once you have the truck, it's going to cost 45 cents per mile. Okay? Um, in part C, um, I'm going to find C of 75. So if I replace x with 75, I got 0.45 times 75 plus 18.95. 0.45 times 75 is 33.75 plus 18.95. I'm getting a 52.7. That's a dollar amount, so it'd be $52.70 to rent the truck and then have driven it 75 miles. That's how much I'd pay uh, if, if I drove the truck 75 miles. Okay. Um, the next thing is uh, some information about horizontal and vertical lines. So a horizontal line is given by the equation y equals b, or y and f of x are the same thing, right? So I could say f of x equals b, and a horizontal line always has a slope of 0. 
A vertical line is given by the equation x equals a. a and b are any real numbers. Okay, and a vertical line always has an undefined slope. By the way, wh why didn't I write f of x for a vertical line? Well, vertical lines are not functions, right? If I have a vertical line and I apply the vertical line test, the vertical line being swung across the graph is going to intersect the vertical line that is there infinitely many times. And so vertical lines are not functions. Any other line, not a vertical line, is going to be a function. Okay? Um, so in this first example, I just have two examples of these. Uh, what if we want to graph the line y equals 3? Or f of x equals 3, that's the same thing. Y equals 3, I, I can know right away that I'm going to be drawing a horizontal line at a height of 3. Okay, now, from what I had written here, horizontal lines always have a slope of 0. Maybe let's see why that is. Okay, so if I set up a, a table and just gather up two points on this line, I need two points to compute a slope. Uh, if I let x be 0 y is 3. If I let x be 2, y is 3. If I let x be anything, y is always going to be 3, right? It's not going to matter what x is. Uh, the points 0, 3, and 2, 3 would be two points on this curve. So let's go ahead and compute the slope. The slope change in y over change in x. So I'm looking at 3 minus 3 for the difference in the y values. 2 minus 0 for the difference in the x values. I get 0 divided by 2. 0 divided by any other number is always 0. Okay, and so horizontal lines are always going to have a slope of 0. Uh, if we draw this line, okay, uh, here's the points 0, 3, and then 2, 3 on the graph. And I asked you, okay, what, what if we let x be anything? y is always going to be 3, right? So it's not going to matter what x is. I, I'm, I'm always going to come up 3 units and plot a point. So because I'm going to have all infinitely many of these points at a height of 3, that's going to create this horizontal line, y equals 3. Okay, uh, let's try this example next. So what if I had the equation x equals negative 2? I can know right away that this equation would be a vertical line. At, uh, at negative 2. Okay, so I'm going I'm to draw that in just a moment. Um, vertical lines always have an undefined slope. So if we gather up two points to compute the slope, uh, here's x and here's y. Okay, um, if, y is, if, 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 if x is negative 2, y is anything. Okay, um, and uh, so y could be 1 or y could be negative 3 or you know, so I'd have these two points, uh, negative 2, 1, and negative 2, negative 3. Y can be anything. If we compute the slope, change in y over change in x, negative 3 minus 1 is negative 4. Negative 2 plus 2 would be 0. And there's a, there's a problem with that because I know I can't divide by 0 in math. So because I get 0 down under, uh, you can't have that. We, we just say that the slope is an undefined value. Okay? Um, and uh, if we were to then draw this line, uh, okay, here's uh, two points on the line. So negative 2, 1, and negative 2, negative 3. Those would be two points there. And uh, if, if we let y be anything, x is always negative 2. So it's not going to matter what y is. I'm always going to come to the left two units and plot a point. So I'll have all infinitely many of these points creating this vertical line, x equals negative 2, and I can then draw the, uh, the line there. Okay. All right, we'll, uh, we'll go ahead and stop the video right here, and uh, I'll pick up with, uh, with these two sections in the next video.